Hello again. Okay, let's do the second problem, this other problem. This problem is asking us to use the method of the sections specifically. Once again, ask for the method of the section specifically because I want you to practice the method of the section. But when you are when you are calculating something, you are the owners of the problem. So you have you can use any method that you want to use. But in this case, if we have to calculate the, the member DF, DG, and EG, DF, this one, DG, this one, and EG, this one, it's obvious that by just doing a section here, you can get the three bars. So that's what we have to do. Of course, originally, I need to calculate this reaction, which is IY, and I have to calculate these two reactions here, AY and AX. And then I do this section. My personal uh, my personal choice is to use this side, but you can use also this side. So let's first calculate the reactions, and by the reactions I mean IY. And for calculating IY, I'm gonna do summation of moments at A equals zero. If you do that, then we will have 800 millimeters times six going in this direction. And you can convert it in meters if you want to. I'm gonna keep it like kilonewton millimeter, but at the end, it's gonna cancel out millimeters and millimeters and the result of the forces, what is what we're looking for is gonna be in kilonewton. So it's gonna be 800 times six, and it's going to be negative, then I'm going to have 1200 times 4, negative also, 1200 times 4, 1200 times 4, and it's negative because I'm doing this, right, 1200 times 4, negative, and then I have this AY, which is producing a rotation in this direction when I push it, right? If you don't see it here, remember the principle of transmissibility, you can move it here, and then you can see perfectly that the moment is going to be positive according to my convention. So this is going to be plus 600 IY equals zero. And then you can solve for IY and IY equals 16 kilonewton. I don't need to calculate reactions at A if I'm going to use just this side of the uh, section. So in this side of the section, I have three unknowns, which are these, and I have three equations, meaning that I can solve the problem by the method of the sections without recurring to anything else. I have this, this, this part here, a force of four kilonewton. And then from this part, you have this force. This force. This force here. And this force here. This is the joint D, this is the joint E, G, I. My reaction, 16 here, this is H, and this is F. That's basically everything that we have. And then we just place our distances here, 300, 300, and then from the joint D, which is not part of the section, but from the location of the point D, I have 400 and 400 here. How do we calculate now our unknowns? Well, think. I can use any combination that I want to with summation of forces in X, Y, and moment, but sometimes it's easier to think before I start acting. Well, sometimes no. If you think before act, act, you can save yourself a lot of trouble. So look, if I apply, let me put just the name of this one. This this is going to be EG. This is going to be DG. And this is going to be DF. So if I apply moments at G, The only unknown force that I have basically is this DF. 
because the rest of that I know. So that's what I'm going to do. Summation of moments and G. Then I'm going to have this force F, which is 4, multiplied by nothing because, you see, it's going there. The force the 4 is vertical and it passes through here. And that's one of the errors that people do usually. They multiply this force 4 times this distance 300. Remember, that force passes through the point, meaning that force is not producing any moment. Now, the force DF, which is this one, is horizontal. I have to multiply by the distance, which is vertical, 300. And that goes in this direction of rotation, is negative. Negative because it's acting in this way, okay? So negative DF times 300. And this one is positive because it's acting in this way, 16 times 300 equals zero. One equation, that's it. That's simple as that. And then we can solve for DF. And DF is gonna be 16 times 300 divided by 300, that's 16 kilonewtons positive sign and the positive sign the only thing that means is that my original assumption was correct so this force is in tension now if I want to calculate the other two these two I can either do summation of forces in X and I get two unknowns summation of forces in Y and I get only one unknown I can do that I can solve summation of forces in Y equals zero if I want to and I can get DG directly now, for this angle, I'm not going to use the angle. I'm going to take the advantage that I know that this is 3, this is 4. So this has to be 5. And you can calculate it, the square root of this square plus this square. But anyway, you can also calculate the angle alpha if you want to. So if you do summation of forces in Y, this DG is acting going downwards. So it's going to be negative DG multiply by 300 divided by 500 or 3 fifth but I'm gonna put 300 divided by 500 so you don't get confused that's negative now I have negative 4 what well, negative 4 because this is negative 4 kilonewton and that's it I don't have anything else equals 0 so I get this 4 multiplied by 5 divided by 3 and I get dg and dg is gonna be negative 6.67 kilonewton or 6.6 .6 periodic, which is the correct value. Negative sign here, what it's telling me is that DG, I assume it in this direction, but actually DG is going in this other di direction, which is in compression. So that force DG, I'm gonna put my joint, I'm gonna say that this is my joint G, and DG is acting in this way. So that's going to mean that that's a compressive force of 6.6 .6 kilonewton. That's the value for dg. The only thing that I have to do now is calculating my last value, and my last value will be I have the f, I have dg, I have to calculate eg. How do I calculate dg? eg, any way that you want to. You can calculate dg by doing summation of forces in x because that's the only unknown. But I'm going to use summation of moments at D just to show you a different way of doing it. So I'm going to say summation of moments at D equals zero in this direction. If I do that, this force DF passes through the point. This force DG passes through the point, so they don't produce moment. This force F produces a moment. That force, that force is 4, four kilonewton, so it's going to be 4 times 400 in this direction, that direction is negative EG is producing a moment, a rotation in this direction with respect to that point you see, like that so it's going to be EG times 300 in this way And that way meaning positive 
Am I missing anything? Yes, I'm missing this one. Because that force, when I push here, is going to produce also a rotation in this direction, which is positive. And it's going to be 16 multiplied by the distance, vertical distance, which is 600, equals 0. And then you can solve for EG. When you solve for EG, then EG has a value of 26.6 kilonewton and it's negative. Once again, that negative value for EG, what it means is that if this is my joint G, EG is acting in compression like that, or is acting in completely opposite direction of what I assumed before. Once you have this, once again, build your summary table. And in that summary table, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, force or bar value in kilonewton, tension compression. My first force is the F, is 16 kilonewton in tension. My second force is DG or GD. DG, 6.6 .6 periodic kilonewton, and this is in compression. And um, the last one is EG, EG, and it's 26.6 .6 also kilonewton in compression. And that's all for this problem. You see, the majority, if not all of the problems that you solve for the method of the sections, they are solved in, in such an easy way. You just look for the appropriate section that you have to do, cut there, and that will make you the solution, that will give you the solution for the problem. In the other case, I will have to solve a bunch of nodes. I have to solve this joint, and then come into this joint, and then come into this joint, and finally to this joint. I have to solve four joints. There are people that work that really fast, but for those cases, I'd rather using the method of the sections. Okay, guys, uh, this is all for this problem. And watch the next, uh, the next lecture. And thank you for watching.